When you're judging what Joe Biden is saying, it's worth remembering that he's not just speaking to a, an audience uh, that consists of players in the Middle East, of Israel and the countries around it. He's also speak, speaking to a domestic political audience. And Democrats really do have a, a big incentive. Joe Biden in particular has a very large incentive to make this conflict go away and get it off of the front pages uh, as soon as possible, uh, preferably by the summer, because right now it is splitting the Democratic coalition here in the United States and proving uh, at, at least a moderate sized, if not a major headache for the Democratic Party going into the election. And I, I think you can't discount that as a as a, a goal um, that Joe Biden has when he's speaking about this stuff. And so when he says he wants a two state solution and when he's talking, you know, when he makes uh, stern phone calls to, you know, leaders in Israel, he's talking to Israel. Yes, that's what he's doing. But he's also talking to Democrats here and trying to make sure that he plays the part that he wants to be seen playing. That analysis, though, is the very reason why, you know, my initial answer to this question was and is always the U.S. should just be less involved. Like, of course, there is a theoretical world where we could do the perfect diplomatic intervention. Uh, many, many presidents, U.S. presidents have labored under the delusion that they can do that correctly. But in the end, their priorities are not actual peace in the Middle East for its own sake. Their priorities are win an election. Their priorities are talk to the Democratic base. Their priorities are a million other things. And so if we are asking for the U.S. to be a leader, a world leader in these matters, we have to recognize that this will always, always, always be true, that it's just us doing domestic electoral politics in a in an extremely high stakes situation, a life and death situation for other people. Libertarians I, declare there are trade offs to all solutions. To all policies, right? Yeah, like breaking this is, details at eleven. Yeah. yeah, no, but it's it's also true that the the accords that the U.S. helped broker uh, between Israel and Egypt and Jordan have been have been good things. I think for you know for the world and for the region. I agree with you. Foreign policy is almost always a uh, an extension of domestic policy. I said this at the time, and I still believe it that the reason why the U.S. invaded Iraq in two thousand three was because Bush needed that from a domestic point of view. There was no connection uh, you know, to getting bin Laden or stopping another 9-11, which is what we were supposed to be doing with the global war on terror. Uh, Matt, I know you are fond of saying that the, the October 6th status quo in Israel was not tenable, and I think that's right. And that goes back to questions of whether it's a two-state solution or something else. When the, uh, you know, when the war is over, and there are legitimate questions to be asking about Netanyahu's plan, which he's kind of laid out for when it will be over, or when Israel says, okay, hostilities are over, there will need to be something that is different than what existed before October 7th. Um, and it may be that the U.S. can help play a role in brokering a deal that actually brings peace and some stability to the region for some level. It may be that we shouldn't have anything to do with that whatsoever. But that's a different question than saying, you know, whether or not the U.S. can be more or less helpful right now. A couple of uh, just follow-on points. One, about the sort of crass domestic politics of it all. You find in most of the news articles, just straight pieces about Biden, White House, wrestling with the issue. There'll be a paragraph or two like, and this is very important because Michigan is a swing state and there's a lot of Amer Americans there. And so Biden wants to signal to them that he's on their team so that he can win the election. And it's like, I ah. Um, you know, one state, one group, uh, one contested election um, affecting the uh, decision making process of a, a once great country is uh, pretty interesting uh, and strange. The other thing that I keep getting echoes of, um, uh, Nick, you mentioned Radio City Music Hall. There was, as there is on every single Biden event basically now, there was at least one or a couple, I think, protesters inside. I paid a lot of money to protest <laughs> apparently to get in there. Um, and they're dogging him at every live event. And it reminds me a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger's first term as governor, um, the California Nurses Association and other uh, labor heavies there um, went to every single event. If he was uh, at his middle school daughter's graduation, and that might not be exactly right, but it's somewhere close, um, there was going to be like 15 or 30 agro nurses chanting Schwarzenegger sucks or whatever and and uh, and waving banners because he had taken on the public sector unions in California. Was that a huge part of public opinion? Much less so probably than 
um, than uh, uh, upset at Israel right now is an, a live issue, especially for Democrats, although Americans are, are souring on Israel's prosecution of the war per Gallup. But um, Schwarzenegger saw it and felt it every day, and it affected him. And I, I have a feeling that Biden, the staff, the White House, you know, 25-year-olds duct taping their mouths in front of of Capitol Hill They're or whatever. They're resigning, like, right, from various well, ages. A couple resigning, yeah. So yeah. like it's in the 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 social, physical space of the president. And it's probably getting to um, is is uh, my guess. It's just a guess. All right, let's move on. Can we, before we yes. move on, can we have like one second on Jose Andres? Because yes. I feel like this has reminded me of how incredibly cool World Central Kitchen is. And it's... It's so libertarian. It's just like such a story. I mean, we've told this story many times, uh, but he is just a dude that was like, hey, right after disasters, people are hungry. What if we just didn't do this the stupid way? And, you know, he's a comp he's a direct competitor to FEMA. He's a direct competitor to major global aid organizations that are supported by and facilitated by world governments. and. Um, I was just listening to um, the Daily, uh, which you know have your have your debates with it or whatever. But they did a really nice episode. That the first half of it was just the story of this venture by Jose Andres. And one thing they noted is that in the disasters that he stepped up for in the U.S., um, the reason that he was so successful is because the FEMA regulations on food aid had become so burdensome, including you have to have a bottle of water of a certain size in every food aid box or else you are not allowed to distribute food aid. And he was That's just like, made up. yeah, That's I'm not going to do that <laughs> here. I made you some beans. And everyone was like, yay, he's a hero. Like, and he is a hero. So I, I think this is just like a good moment, even though a dark one to remember that the efforts that they are that they are putting in are. Du you know, in direct competition with governments that cannot get their shit together to help people who need the help the most. Um, and he's just a guy who knows a bunch of other guys who have like a slight adrenaline addiction. And so he's like, what if all these stupid chefs could be put to use? And I love that. Uh, also, great cocktails. If you ever go to one of his establishments, have a margarita with salt air. It's like this foamy salt air stuff that they put on top of their margaritas. It's That's incredible. what the Gazans really need right now. They probably do, yeah. TBH. They um, need a lot of things, this, but that too. It's also worth remembering that uh, this should, you know, this entire situation should be yet one more chit against the U, uh, the United Nations, uh, which has actually been overseeing all sorts of stuff in Gaza, including uh, relief, and is just a completely incompetent agency, um, a government, and particularly in Gaza, where something like ten percent of its uh of its members were involved in hamas so it's you know uh there should it, sh it would be a better world where jose andres's uh uh you know intervention is not necessary but uh, it's a it's a reminder it be a of better world where it's what's the actually only going one. on that was a clip from the reason roundtable podcast to watch more clips go here to watch the whole show go here and subscribe to the reason roundtable wherever you get your podcasts